Story 1, I have devoted an immense amount of effort and unwavering dedication to reach my current position in life. As I stand on the brink of achieving millionaire status, I attribute my success to the arduous journey I embarked on to ascend the corporate hierarchy. Additionally, I am blessed with an extraordinary life partner. The various facets of my existence were beautifully intertwined until the unfortunate revelation of my wife's betrayal. To compound matters, I discovered that her illicit involvement with my boss influenced my professional advancements. The situation took a dramatic turn when I made the decision to expose their relationship during one of our esteemed company's annual gatherings, attended by all employees, including the affluent company owner. It was an extraordinary and unprecedented circumstance. Greetings, my name is John, and I currently find myself grappling with an exceedingly distressing predicament. My life was once characterized by simplicity, enriched by a fulfilling career and a profoundly affectionate relationship. Growing up as the sole offspring of my parents, I was fortunate enough to witness the depth of their unwavering love for one another. My father diligently worked as an office clerk, while my mother engaged in a series of transient occupations. Despite our modest financial circumstances, we enjoyed stability, primarily due to the acquisition of a home that had been bequeathed to my mother as part of our inheritance. Such was the backdrop against which my upbringing unfolded. While opulence did not define my daily existence, love enveloped me. Upon reaching the juncture of higher education, I was confronted with the realization that the trajectory of my life would be influenced by financial considerations. Many of my peers possessed abundant wealth, and as I navigated the college landscape, I became aware of the unspoken rules that governed our societal fabric. It became apparent that gaining access to exclusive circles necessitated popularity, an attribute often contingent upon having an attractive girlfriend, material affluence, and the means to procure extravagant gifts for one's romantic partner. At its core, life seemed to revolve around the pursuit of wealth, a domain in which I found myself lacking, save for the modest allowance graciously provided by my father for books and unforeseen circumstances. My education was fully funded, and I never sought additional financial support. However, at a young age, I firmly resolved to amass substantial wealth, envisioning a future where my prospective children would not only be embraced by love and abundance, but also inherit a considerable fortune. In an environment devoid of distractions, the mind naturally gravitates towards scholarly pursuits. Thus, I embarked on such a path. I immersed myself in diligent study, dedicating countless hours to owning my intellectual acumen. Eventually, my efforts bore fruit, and I secured a commendable position as an entry-level executive within one of the corporate titans. While the remuneration exceeded the customary compensation for such a role, my sense of pride stemmed not from the monetary aspect, but from the distance I had traversed on my journey. With my first paycheck, I indulged in tickets for my parents to visit me in the bustling metropolis of New York, my current place of residence. Although my financial means were limited, preventing grand gestures and extravagant dining experiences, I ardently desired to showcase the progress I had made. They found solace in my rented abode, which I shared with a colleague from my workplace. The sense of accomplishment I felt in that moment was immeasurable, and I longed for my parents to witness the fruits of my labor and the life I had crafted for myself. Fortunes continued to favor me, and within a year, I ascended to the position of team leader. Eventually, I secured a rented apartment that I could proudly call my own, ushering in a phase of contentment and delight. It was during this period that serendipity introduced me to my neighbor, Sarah, an enchanting woman whose beauty was unparalleled in my eyes. After a prolonged period of being unattached, trepidation had settled within me, rendering me cautious about making the first move. However, fate smiled upon me, as one day she boldly extended an invitation for coffee at her residence. Overwhelmed with elation, I struggled to contain my excitement, yet my radiant countenance and enthusiastic acceptance betrayed my true emotions. Certainly, I replied, a glimmer of anticipation dancing in my eyes. Thus began the enchanting love story between Sarah and me, and our courtship swiftly blossomed. As my professional endeavors continued to flourish, culminating in my appointment as the head of my department, I found myself emboldened to take the next stride. With heartfelt sincerity, I proposed to Sarah, and to my delight, she accepted my proposal, solidifying our bond in the most wondrous of unions. Life had surpassed my wildest dreams, and we embarked on planning a summer wedding, where cherished friends and family, including both sets of parents, would bestow their blessings upon our union. 
merely four years post my commencement, I found myself firmly entrenched in a remarkable financially rewarding position in the bustling metropolis of New York. The confluence of my professional achievements and matrimonial bliss seemed almost ethereal. Over the subsequent two years, my unwavering focus remained steadfastly fixed on my career trajectory, propelled by the burning desire to secure a prosperous future for my prospective family and attain the dream of home ownership prior to embracing parenthood. Sarah, my cherished partner, unflinchingly bolstered my ambitions, never uttering complaints about our limited shared time. Both of us harbored an unswerving conviction in the pursuit of ascending the corporate ladder, regarding our nascent marital status as an impetus for accelerated triumphs. During this juncture, a serendipitous bond took shape between myself and Mike, my superior and the esteemed chief executive officer of our organization. It was truly awe-inspiring to behold his meteoric ascent to success, particularly considering his relatively tender age. Despite being in his late thirties, he had already attained an illustrious position within the company. Furthermore, Mike was blissfully wedded to Emily. The four of us fostered a profound camaraderie, cultivating a supportive and mutually beneficial relationship that expedited the realization of my aspirations. Meanwhile, Sarah charted her own course as an emerging fashion designer, making notable strides towards her own professional accomplishments. Though our lives were punctuated by demanding schedules, we sought solace and elation in our union. Evenings were spent eagerly anticipating each other's return, relishing heartfelt repasts, a testament to the indomitable strength of our bond. As I drew ever closer to my defined objectives, the time had come to broach the subject of commencing a family with Sarah. Anticipating this pivotal conversation, I returned home that evening brimming with anticipation. However, to my chagrin, Sarah was conspicuously absent. Weary from the day's events, I resigned myself to the couch, eventually succumbing to the embrace of slumber. The following morn, upon rousing from my repose, Sarah remained ensconced in profound slumber within the confines of our chamber. Dispatching her a text message, I embarked upon my quotidian routine, making my way to the office. Days melded together, each bearing resemblance to its predecessor, as Sarah's tardiness persisted and I refrained from prying into the matter. Our demanding schedules often engendered physical separation, rendering it alarmingly facile to dismiss the gnawing disquiet that began to take root within me. Nevertheless, after a week of such enigmatic encounters, an insatiable curiosity impelled me to delve deeper into the enigma rather than resorting to intrusive investigative measures. I endeavored to initiate discussions concerning her itinerary on multiple occasions, only to be met with elusive responses. Determined to unearth the truth, I made an impromptu visit to Sarah's workplace one evening, only to discover it devoid of human presence. With a palpable sense of trepidation, I dialed her number, lingering outside her office, as faint strains of music wafted through the line. When she finally answered, her voice greeted me, tinged with an apologetic undertone. Hello, my love. I apologize profusely, but work has been utterly tumultuous today, and I shall remain detained at the office throughout the night. My heart sank, leaving me speechless as I abruptly ended the call. Tears blurred my vision, and through the haze, a stark realization dawned on me. Sarah was entangled in an extramarital affair. It seemed to be the only logical explanation for the chain of events that had unfolded before me. A fog of confusion enveloped my thoughts, compelling me to seek solace in a nearby establishment. There, I sought refuge in the numbing embrace of alcohol consuming a succession of libations until their count eluded me. Eventually, inebriation overcame me, and I collapsed onto the bar floor, oblivious to the world around me. The awakening was sudden, thanks to an attentive waiter who roused me from my intoxicated slumber. It was 3 a.m., and the establishment, on the verge of closure, forced me to face sobriety. In a dazed stupor, I stumbled my way back home, fully aware of Sarah's conspicuous absence. My mind swirled with a whirlwind of chaotic thoughts before finally succumbing to the oblivion of sleep. When I awoke, well past the usual office hours, a cacophony of noises emanated from the kitchen, beckoning me forward. There stood Sarah, casually engaged in culinary endeavors, a sight that puzzled and confounded me. Could my suspicions be the result of an overactive imagination? Perhaps there was an alternative explanation, diverting their rendezvous away from the confines of the office. A passing comment about my nocturnal indulgences and subsequent somnolence escaped her lips, met only with a silent smile on my part. Summoning my courage, 
I inquired about her whereabouts the previous evening, intending to embark on an important discussion and share a delightful dinner. Her response only reinforced my suspicions, reiterating her alleged night-long toil within the walls of her workplace. The need to unravel the fabric of her deception weighed heavily on me, yet the fear of uncovering the truth gripped my soul. Promptly I contacted my workplace, feigning an excuse to mask my true intentions. Driven by a fervent desire to uncover clues and comprehend the enigma shrouding our relationship, I devised a plan to scrutinize the circumstances more closely. Sarah, departing for her workplace around noon, left me languishing at home, feigning indisposition. She bid me farewell, planting a tender kiss upon my forehead, assuring me of her return by seven o'clock. As she disappeared from sight, I bided my time, granting her a brief leeway before commencing my clandestine pursuit. Stealthily, I followed in her wake, trailing her vehicle as it weaved through the city streets, its trajectory aligned with her professed destination. A semblance of confirmation began to take shape, as nothing appeared awry or suspicious during the journey. I patiently waited within the confines of my car, stationed outside her workplace, yearning for a revelation that would dispel the shadows of uncertainty. However, time seemed to stretch on endlessly, with no significant event unfolding. My resolve wavered, and thoughts of abandoning my covert vigilance started to infiltrate my mind. Just as I contemplated retreat, a glimmer of hope flickered to life. My boss's vehicle materialized, gracefully parking next to mine. Instinctively, I concealed myself within the confines of my car, fearful of an unexpected encounter between him and my secretive observation. Yet, to my astonishment, he parked his car beside mine, and I bore witness to Sarah emerging from the building. A paralyzing stillness overcame me as I beheld the two of them engage in a fleeting exchange of affection, their lips briefly meeting before they disappeared into the sanctuary of his vehicle. My world shattered in that moment, and my mind grappled with the profound implications of this heart-wrenching revelation. My wife, entangled in an illicit affair with my superior, the gravity of the situation weighed heavily upon me. The question gnawed at my conscience. What course of action should I pursue in the wake of this devastating discovery? Update number one, greetings, esteemed individuals. It has been a week since the unsettling revelation concerning my wife's affair with my boss, and my once ordinary existence has transformed into a complex and bewildering ordeal. I feel compelled to provide an update on the various responses I have received thus far. While many of you have advised me to confront her, a significant predicament impedes this course of action. Allow me to delve further into this matter. Throughout the years, I have diligently worked to establish a solid financial foundation, and I am hesitant to jeopardize it due to my wife's infidelity. The motives behind her seeking solace in another man's arms leave me utterly perplexed. We have been married for a mere two years, and yet she has grown disillusioned with our union. Sleep eludes me as I strive to unearth a rational justification for her behavior, but my efforts have thus far yielded little beyond the possibility that her character fails to comprehend the gravity of her choices. Furthermore, she remains blissfully unaware of my discovery of her transgressions, leaving me at a loss as to how to navigate the complexities that lie ahead. However, some of you have suggested seeking assistance from Emily, a proposition to which I am increasingly inclined. This approach appears to offer a viable means of safeguarding my professional trajectory while simultaneously exposing the treachery of both Mike and Sarah. Throughout the week, I have meticulously maintained the facade of normalcy in my interactions with Sarah ensuring that she remains oblivious to my mounting suspicions. Meanwhile, she has been discussing our future, one that includes children and the establishment of a harmonious home, all the while unaware of the storm brewing beneath the surface. The mere mention of starting a family with her has caused profound anguish in my heart. Although I deeply love her and yearn to embark on the sublime journey of building a family, I have come to accept the harsh reality that such aspirations have been shattered. Regrettably, my wife is an adept manipulator and does not embody the virtue I once attributed to her. As she peacefully slumbers beside me, blissfully dreaming of the future, she remains entangled with my boss in ways that I have yet to fully comprehend. Prioritizing the preservation of my professional standing, I resolve to arrange a meeting with Emily. Unfortunately, the outcome of our encounter did not meet my expectations. While Emily and I were acquainted, having attended a formal dinner together, it would be disingenuous to claim that we were close confidants. She extended her hospitality and welcomed me into her home. However, our ensuing conversation shattered my hopes. 
when I confided in Emily about the infidelity of her husband and my own wife, she retreated into a state of complete denial. Unjustly, she shifted the blame onto me, accusing my thoughts of impurity and deeming my accusations deeply offensive. I found myself ill-prepared for the reception that awaited me, as my sincere efforts to convey the gravity of the situation were met with indifference. Her dismissive demeanor and impolite manner caught me off guard as she callously demanded that I cease my inquiries. Yielding to her wishes, I acquiesced and took my leave. However, before parting ways, I implored her not to divulge this matter to Mike, urging her to conduct her own investigation before involving others. With a mere nod and a gesture towards the exit, she signaled my departure. It was my cue to exit the stage. Two weeks elapsed in silence, devoid of any communication from Emily. Restlessness consumed me with each passing day, leaving me increasingly unsettled. Meanwhile, Mike and Sarah persisted in their covert trysts, clandestinely meeting at least twice a week. Sarah would contrive the need to toil late into the night, employing it as a justification for her absence from home. As I bore witness to these deceitful acts, an overwhelming surge of vengeance and anger coursed through my veins. My mounting frustration gradually transformed into an unadulterated rage. I became resolute in my determination to expose both of them for their despicable actions and their facade of devotion to their spouses. Finally, after enduring two weeks of anticipation, I received a call from Emily. She requested a meeting, but this time not at her residence. We agreed to convene at a nearby cafe. As my eyes beheld her, it was evident that she had been afflicted by ill health. Inquiring about her well-being, I was met with dark, encircled eyes that hinted at the depth of her distress. Overwhelmed by emotions, she succumbed to uncontrollable sobs. Uncertain of how to provide solace, I simply clasped her hand, offering a source of comfort. Once she regained composure, she retrieved her laptop, leaving me perplexed as to her intentions. I had no desire to bear witness to explicit images of her husband, or my wife Emily, proceeded to unveil a series of photographs depicting young women, most of whom were in their late twenties. The presence of wedding bands adorning their fingers served as an indication of their marital status. Perplexed, I inquired about the significance of these images. Emily revealed that these were the findings of the private investigator she had enlisted to uncover the truth behind her husband's secrets. In her quest to unearth information about him and my wife, she ascertained that Mike had engaged in relationships with five other women. My heart ached for Emily, and I was consumed by an overwhelming sense of remorse for my inadvertent role in this distressing situation. Emily, a compassionate soul deeply enamored with Mike, found it arduous to fathom his unfaithful conduct. With the remnants of empathy still lingering within me, I turned to Emily, seeking solace and contemplating ways to extend my support. However, her subsequent revelation left me astounded, rivaling the shock I experienced upon discovering Mike's entanglement with a multitude of women. It came to light that Emily's true identity was none other than Emily McNeil and her father held a position of influence as the proprietor of the very company where I was employed. After her union with Mike, her father had bestowed upon him the prestigious role of CEO. This disclosure shattered my perception of Mike as a self-made prodigy, unveiling a web of nepotism and privilege. In an effort to assuage my concerns, Emily reassured me that my employment was secure, even going so far as to promise a potential promotion if I assisted in exposing Mike's infidelity and facilitating their divorce. Given my own yearning for dissolution from my marriage, I readily embraced her proposition. However, we both acknowledged the high stakes involved. Neither of us had any intention of relinquishing a single penny to our estranged spouses during the divorce proceedings. Consequently, we scheduled another rendezvous for the forthcoming Monday at the same locale. In the interim, we were tasked with devising a plan of retribution that was both judicious and ethically defensible. Fortunately, we possessed a wealth of incriminating evidence, courtesy of the assiduous private investigator who had unearthed indisputable proof of Sarah's and Mike's adulterous affair. Upon arriving home, I was taken aback to find Sarah awaiting my return. She had prepared an exquisite repast and urged me to hasten my ablutions so that we could relish it while it still retained its warmth. Nevertheless, my recent encounter with Emily had left me profoundly unsettled, rendering it impossible to suppress my thoughts any longer. I unabashedly confessed to Sarah my intention to sever our marital ties. As I stood beneath the cascading torrents of the shower, my tears merged with the rivulets, 
and I grappled with comprehending the inexplicable turn of events. Despite the tumult, my love for Sarah endured, and I clung to visions of a shared future. Her nonchalant demeanor inflicted anguish upon my heart, bruising my ego. The urge to confront her with the irrefutable evidence presented by Emily and demand an explanation surged within me. However, I recognized that such a confrontation would merely afford Mike and Sarah ample time to prepare for the arduous journey that awaited them. Our scheme to humiliate them and secure their financial downfall in the divorce proceedings would be jeopardized. Moreover, I couldn't bear to entangle Emily any further in this intricate tapestry of deceit. Henceforth, I emerged from the confines of my shower and proceeded to the dining room, where I assumed an entirely different persona. Engaging in conversation, sharing laughter, and partaking in the evening repast with my unfaithful wife, I concealed the tempestuous turmoil that raged within me. Sarah remained blissfully unaware, a naive soul ensnared in the intricate web of her own transgressions. Update 2 I would like to provide you all with an update. Throughout the past month, Emily and I have engaged in regular meetings every Monday, meticulously strategizing our next course of action. I am immensely grateful for the overwhelming support I have received from this community as I prepare to embark on a significant transformation. It is undeniably challenging to avoid losing sight of oneself and succumbing to feelings of guilt for the repercussions that this endeavor will inevitably have on my spouse. However, the kind words and empathetic understanding expressed by each and every one of you serve as a poignant reminder that you grasp the intricate complexities of my situation. I refuse to squander the fruits of my labor on an individual who is undeniably entangled in an illicit affair with my superior. Yesterday marked our final gathering before commencing the execution of our plan. Over the past month, Emily and I have dedicated ourselves to assiduously compiling evidence, meticulously documenting their interactions the duration of their rendezvous, and the nature of their activities. Some of the information we uncovered was arduous to digest, yet it became increasingly apparent that Mike's transgressions far exceeded those of Sarah. I keenly observed the anguish and shame that flickered within Emily's eyes as she confronted the stark reality of her husband's infidelity. It is disheartening to witness how women often internalize blame when their husbands prove to be less than honorable. It is crucial to recognize that they are not at fault. In fact, Making the courageous decision to extricate oneself from such toxic relationships often leads to profound personal healing and transformative growth. Emily and I have made the resolute choice to publicly expose their affair, seizing the opportune moment at our forthcoming office event, a mere week away. Irony permeates the air, as I have been nominated for the esteemed title of Employee of the Year, while Emily is slated to present accolades to our dedicated team members. It is amidst this event that the truth shall be unveiled to all in attendance. Emily yearns for the presence of her loved ones, and my sole objective is to ensure that Sarah experiences the searing humiliation that she has brazenly subjected me to by toying with my affections and emotions. Finally, the long-awaited day arrived, and we all congregated at an opulent five-star venue nestled in the heart of New York City. My heart raced, and a palpable sense of nervous anticipation coursed through my veins. The convergence of Sarah, Emily, Mike, and myself took place on the precipice of a profound metamorphosis in our lives. The grand occasion unfolded as an office event, where Emily, poised gracefully on the stage, assumed the role of bestowing awards upon deserving individuals. The apex of the ceremony would manifest in the proclamation of the highly coveted Best Employee of the Year accolade, an honor I had anticipated with certainty. However, the moment of my acceptance speech held within it the potential to reshape the very fabric of our corporate environment. I must admit that as my name resonated through the room, a sense of trepidation journeyed through the conduits of my veins. Stepping onto the stage, Emily extended to me the microphone, accompanied by the esteemed award. In a hushed tone, I murmured, it is time for the spectacle to commence. Suddenly, as if orchestrated by unseen forces, the projector behind me dimmed, enveloping the space in an ethereal darkness. Simultaneously, a solitary spotlight cast its luminous gaze upon Sarah. Every pair of eyes in the room converged upon her, and in that precise moment, I seized the opportune juncture to articulate words that would forever alter the course of our intertwined lives. This prestigious accolade, I proclaimed resolutely, is dedicated to my beloved wife, whose unwavering support has propelled me to unparalleled heights of achievement in my professional trajectory. Expressing gratitude for her favoritism in the eyes of my superior, 
I subtly acknowledged the revelation of her true essence, which had materialized during the nascent stages of our marital union. As the words gracefully departed from my lips, the dormant projector burst forth into a vibrant display, showcasing a sequence of deeply personal photographs that encapsulated the intimate connection between Sarah and Mike. The collective gasp that ensued reverberated throughout the room, intermingled with hushed whispers that effervesced amidst the charged atmosphere. Half of the attendees directed their gaze towards Mike, while the remaining half locked their eyes upon Sarah, their countenances a tapestry woven with astonishment, incredulity, and moral judgment. With swift dexterity, Emily wrested the microphone from my grasp, resolute in her determination to expose the transgressions of Mike. In that charged moment, Emily's father, Joshua McConnell, a man of esteemed stature as the founder and president of the company, who had graced the event with his presence, or rather, who used to grace the event with his presence, cast a tearful glare towards his daughter. He elected to abruptly curtail the proceedings, entreating the guests to disperse, leaving only the five of us submerged in an unsettling silence. Mr. McNeil, Emily's father, seethed with unrestrained fury, unleashing a torrent of curses upon Mike, pledging to dismantle his existence and obliterate his professional reputation in the blink of an eye. Meanwhile, Mike resembled a specter who had borne witness to the netherworld, his composure visibly shattered. Sarah, lacking the fortitude to meet my gaze, averted her eyes, fixating instead upon her shoes, seemingly trapped within the confines of self-inflicted shame. For the subsequent fifteen minutes, I found myself ensconced in the cacophonous stillness of what was once our shared abode, an overwhelming deluge of emotions engulfing my very being. My existence has plunged into disarray, consumed by the devastating repercussions of Sarah's betrayal. The dreams that once radiated with vitality now lie shattered, and the risky decision I made threatens to dismantle the entirety of my professional trajectory. The weight of my despair presses upon me, enveloping me in a profound sense of desolation, unlike any I have ever encountered. I stand at the precipice of severing ties with my wife, a woman with whom I have shared a mere anniversary, and the consequences will tarnish her reputation while simultaneously obliterating my own aspirations. Amidst my tears, my heart spills forth its anguish, yet solace eludes me, and my isolation is acutely palpable. Though consumed by self-pity, I refuse to conjure excuses or extend even a modicum of sympathy towards Sarah. Deep within, I am cognizant that the path of divorce is the only righteous course of action. Seeking refuge from the tumultuous tempest within my mind, I reach for a bottle of scotch, hoping its numbing embrace will lull me into slumber. Despite the clock edging closer to 2 a.m., my restless psyche stubbornly resists the comforting embrace of sleep. In this vulnerable state, as the intoxicating essence of the scotch gently courses through my veins, I now embark on the arduous task of recounting the distressing chronicles of the most harrowing day I have ever borne witness to. As for Emily and myself, the process of divorce has already been set in motion. However, our legal advisors have counseled us to postpone the submission of paperwork until after the culmination of the annual event. We yearned for our respective spouses to bear witness to the full magnitude of their actions, unwilling to let our divorce be veiled in secrecy. Now that the pivotal moment has transpired, the necessary documentation will soon be set into motion. Inevitably, we shall find ourselves confronting one another within the halls of justice. In the days to come, I shall strive to keep you duly informed of the unfolding events. You, my esteemed confidants, are the sole recipients of my narrative. It is within the sanctuary of this shared space that I gather the courage to expose the depths of my heart and soul. Update three greetings, esteemed readers. With heartfelt appreciation and a burdened spirit, I present to you the third installment of this captivating chronicle that has unfolded in the tapestry of my existence. Time, that elusive entity, has slipped through my grasp, leaving me adrift amidst its depths, as if six or seven months have surreptitiously evaporated. In moments of utmost elation or excruciating torment, the boundaries of temporal reality blur, leaving me disoriented and bereft of bearings. Today, we witness the denouement of Sarah and my shared narrative, and it is with immense trepidation that I undertake the task of conveying its concluding nuances. Before delving into the intricacies that lie before us, permit me to extend my heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you with your benevolent words. Have bestowed upon me solace, and served as a reminder that I am not a wretched soul, but rather an individual ensnared in the clutches of profound anguish. In the aftermath of the fateful annual function, 
seeking solace in the intoxicating embrace of spirits. I yielded myself to the amorphous refuge of alcohol, attempting to submerge my sorrows within its intoxicating depths. As the haze of inebriation gradually dissipated the following morning, I was confronted with the disheartening reality of Sarah's absence. Weighed down by a heavy heart and with emotions untamed, I refrained from embarking on a desperate search or reaching out to her, for my own composure remained a distant aspiration. Instead, summoning the reservoirs of fortitude that resided within, I mustered the strength to initiate contact with Emily, seeking an update on the progress of our divorce proceedings. It was then unveiled to me that both Mike and Sarah would receive the divorce papers within the ensuing 48 hours, an imperative step towards formalizing the dissolution of our matrimonial bonds. Armed with the knowledge of the imminent confrontation that loomed before us, I steeled myself for the moment when Sarah's gaze would intersect with my own, when the weight of her transgressions would truly register within her conscience. And so, the day of our initial court hearing arrived, heralding the commencement of a legal battle. Our legal counsel, meticulously handpicked under the discerning eye of the esteemed Mr. McNeil, stood resolute by our side, their expertise instilling an unwavering confidence in the pursuit of justice that we held dear. Bolstered by an array of tangible evidence, meticulously compiled to substantiate our claims against our unfaithful spouses, we embarked upon this arduous journey, seeking retribution and vindication before the tempestuous winds of our predicament swept through external channels and reached the ears of our loved ones, I deemed it necessary to confide in my parents. For you see, in the intricate web of a relationship with a billionaire, news possesses an uncanny ability to traverse vast distances with alacrity. As I dialed the familiar numbers that connected me to my parental figures, my mother's voice quivered with anguish, her tears flowing freely as she conveyed her sympathies. Never could they have fathomed that Sarah, whom they held in the highest esteem, would succumb to such a grievous transgression. Nonetheless, they stood unwaveringly behind my resolute decision to bring this matter to light and pursue the path of divorce. And thus, dear readers, we find ourselves at this pivotal juncture in the convoluted tapestry of my existence. The final page turns, the curtain descends, and we bid adieu to this chapter of my life. I extend my sincerest gratitude for your unwavering support and profound comprehension throughout this tumultuous period. As I bid farewell to this narrative, I do so harboring the hope that my tale has resonated within the chambers of your own hearts, casting a luminous gaze upon the intricate complexities of human relationships and the indomitable spirit that propels us forward in the face of formidable adversity. Without hesitation, my parents promptly made their way to New York resolutely standing by my side as we approached the imposing edifice of the courthouse. As we arrived, an unsettling tableau greeted my eyes. Sarah, now residing with her parents, flanked by their unwavering presence. While some may perceive their staunch support as brazen, it is an inherent instinct for parents to rally behind their progeny. Indeed, such an observation holds considerable weight. The legal proceedings commenced, and our astute legal representatives left no stone unturned as they fastidiously dismantled every facet of Mike and Sarah's lives. Their careers, reputations, and conduct were subjected to relentless scrutiny, leaving no avenue for them to elude the gravity of their transgressions. A surge of empathy welled within me for Sarah's parents, compelled to bear witness to this public spectacle of ignominy. However, it was Sarah's own volition to have them present, thus squarely placing the burden of responsibility upon her shoulders. As Sarah's legal team concluded their presentations, any semblance of a viable defense crumbled into oblivion. The atmosphere within the room became saturated with an undeniable aura of guilt. I maintained unwavering confidence that our divorce would be granted, as the evidence presented left no room for doubt. However, to my astonishment, Mr. McNeil, the presiding authority, harbored a distinct agenda in mind. At his behest, our legal representatives made an audacious demand. It entailed the forceful removal of Mike from any position within the company, coupled with the issuance of a damning character certificate that would impede his chances of re-establishing himself within the same professional realm. Furthermore, both Mike and Sarah were divested of any legal entitlements to our shared financial assets. Instead, they were mandated to provide a substantial sum as restitution for the mental anguish they had inflicted. Additionally, they were explicitly barred from asserting any claims to our joint accounts or financial resources, including those held by our respective spouses. The weight of their transgressions bore down upon them, and the consequences of their actions were finally being exacted. Justice, in its unwavering pursuit, 
sought to restore equilibrium and assuage the anguish they had inflicted upon me. Standing amidst the solemnity of the courtroom, I bore witness to the culmination of this arduous odyssey, and a renewed sense of hope blossomed within my being. The path to healing and redemption beckoned, and I remained resolute in forging ahead, leaving behind the shattered remnants of a once-cherished bond. As we stood in the aftermath of our tumultuous legal battle, a torrent of emotions surged within us. Even Mike, his eyes brimming with tears, and Sarah, burdened by the weight of her guilt, could not escape the intensity of the moment. The ordeal had exacted a toll on all of us, thrusting us into a realm of adversity that seemed inconceivable at our tender age. Yet, against all odds, we emerged as the victors in this grueling struggle. As we embarked on the journey back home, the aftermath of recent events loomed heavily in the air. It was during this homeward drive that a message from Sarah illuminated the screen of my phone. In her heartfelt apology, she conveyed the profound depths of her remorse for the predicament she had placed me in. She also shared her intentions to relocate to a different town in search of solace and, perhaps, an opportunity for a fresh start. The words on that screen stirred within me a complex range of emotions, leaving my parents at a loss for words as they attempted to console me. The gravity of the situation left us all too distraught to delve further into the matter. Meanwhile, the case and its intricate details garnered widespread media coverage. Our faces adorned the screens of news channels, transforming our story into the talk of the entire New York City. The boundaries between public and private life blurred, and it seemed that every corner of the city had been apprised of the events that unfolded among the four of us. It served as a form of retribution, a validation of sorts, fulfilling a yearning for justice that had smoldered within me. Although the life I had envisioned with my wife lay shattered, I remained steadfast in my conviction that Sarah had received her just retribution. Assuming Mike's former managerial position proved to be a formidable challenge, yet I persisted, resolute in my commitment to my career. The office, once a sanctuary, transformed into a breeding ground of whispers and ridicule as my personal life became fodder for gossip. Nevertheless, I pressed on, unwavering in my pursuit of professional growth. Deep within, I clung to the belief in love and loyalty, yearning for the day when I would encounter a woman who truly deserved my unwavering devotion. As for Mike, his whereabouts remained a mystery to me. Rumors circulated, hinting that he too had chosen to depart from town, seeking refuge from the remnants of a life he had dismantled. The details of his journey, however, eluded my knowledge, leaving his fate to the realm of speculation and uncertainty. The road ahead stretched before me, uncertain and shrouded in shadows of the past. Yet I forged onward, guided by the flickering flame of hope yearning to discover a love that would transcend the betrayals I had endured. The echoes of the past lingered, but within me burned a resilient spirit, ready to embrace the future that awaited. Story 2 now. Let us embark on another captivating narrative, distinct from the preceding account. Prepare yourselves as we delve into Story 2. I must clarify that this tale is not derived from personal experience, but rather originates from an intimate acquaintance of mine, a long-standing resident of the United States. While I will modify certain dialogues to enhance clarity, my friend has graciously granted me permission to share their story online. To facilitate the narration, I shall present it as if it were my own, while ensuring the preservation of privacy by altering select details. Within the confines of my abode, I cohabit with my beloved partner, Karen, and a cherished childhood companion named Jake, who earns his livelihood as a sales representative. Our humble dwelling rests on the outskirts of a renowned American city. In my late twenties, a period marked by professional uncertainty, fate led me to a crossroads where gainful employment became imperative. Regrettably, the establishment where I had previously toiled, a local bar, closed its doors. Sensing my precarious circumstances, Jake extended a helping hand, disclosing that his newfound romantic interest, Jill, had recently acquired a modest motel with a petite kitchenette. Jill, in need of assistance, sought capable individuals to augment her workforce. Naturally, I seized this opportunity with fervor, particularly given Karen's present state of unemployment. Our mounting financial obligations and impending health insurance premiums burdened us heavily. Taking the initiative, I dialed Jill's number, arranging a rendezvous at her freshly acquired property for a formal introduction. Prior to this encounter, Jake had already acquainted Jill with my professional background, emphasizing my practical experience in the realm of hospitality. To provide contextual background, it is worth noting that my father, a skilled electrician, 
firmly believes that if one possesses the means to remunerate someone for a repair endeavor, it is often more cost-effective to undertake the task independently. He has bestowed upon me a wealth of knowledge, a legacy that continues to resonate even to this day. During our conversation, which extended over a span of 30 minutes, Jill sought to assess my capabilities through the execution of various assignments. These tasks encompassed endeavors such as rewiring an electrical outlet to rectifying a clogged sink, culminating in a quiz pertaining to liquor laws. Needless to say, my proficiency surpassed her expectations, resulting in my immediate appointment within her establishment. From the very beginning, our utmost attention was dedicated to the meticulous preparation of the property in anticipation of the forthcoming launch of our business endeavor. Initially, Jill had envisioned minor tasks such as painting, fixture replacements, and furniture updates. However, we were soon confronted with the disheartening reality that the electrical wiring was in a deplorable state, necessitating a comprehensive rewiring undertaking. This posed a significant financial challenge for Jill, as it exceeded her allocated provisions. Fortunately, my father, who happened to be in a temporary work hiatus, benevolently offered his expertise and services. Employing leftover materials from prior projects, which had already been accounted for financially, my father embarked upon the task at hand. Any additional materials required for the rewiring were graciously covered by Jill. In terms of compensation for his labor, my father humbly requested a steak dinner and a refreshing beer on Friday evenings. After three weeks of diligently working alongside my father, the rewiring project not only reached completion but also adhered to all the necessary electrical codes. Remarkably, the incurred costs proved significantly lower than initially anticipated. Subsequently, Jill and I dedicated the ensuing one to two months to the arduous task of meticulously painting all 15 motel rooms, along with the bistro and the bar. Moreover, we fastidiously cleaned the kitchen and cool rooms, leaving no aspect unattended in our relentless pursuit of perfection. While Jake occasionally offered his assistance, his presence was transient, often departing after a mere 20 minutes citing the need to secure sales for his pharmaceutical company. Driven by her unwavering passion for this venture, Jill frequently toiled late into the night. During my leisure hours, I would transport furniture home for restoration, meticulously bringing each piece back to its former glory before reintegrating it into the business premises. Finally, after six months of concerted efforts, the business was poised to open its doors. Much credit for this accomplishment was owed to my father's unwavering support and skillful contributions. Thanks to his invaluable assistance, we managed to remain within our budgetary constraints. With the business officially launched, Jill assumed the role of overseeing its operations and the kitchen, while I seamlessly transitioned into a versatile position, offering my skills wherever they were needed, whether in the kitchen, behind the bar, or tending to maintenance. As the second in command, I held a salaried position prepared to fulfill any role as dictated by the circumstances. For an entire year, everything operated flawlessly. Our business thrived, yielding profitable returns. My father relished his weekly indulgence in a well-deserved steak dinner and beer. Karen, my partner, seemed content with our circumstances, and Jake continued his successful work as a sales representative for a pharmaceutical company. However, one fateful day, I unexpectedly fell ill while at work. Recognizing the pressing need for rest and recuperation, I made the decision to end my shift early and return home. As I pulled into my driveway, an unsettling sensation gnawed at my gut, for everything appeared to be in order. Jake's vehicle was parked in its usual spot, a common occurrence since he resided with us. Initially, I perceived no cause for concern, deeming everything as routine and uneventful. Adhering to my customary routine, I positioned my vehicle in close proximity to Jake's, unknowingly setting the stage for a significant turn of events. As I opened the door, a scene of profound astonishment unfolded before my eyes. Karen and Jake were entwined in an intimate embrace upon the couch. Startled by my sudden arrival, Jake hastily scrambled to retrieve his clothing and swiftly departed through the rear exit, acutely aware of the gravity of the situation. The shock of witnessing such a profound betrayal ignited a fiery altercation between Karen and myself, an altercation that persisted well into the night. Karen attempted to shift the blame onto me, insinuating that my absence and time spent with Jill had driven her into the arms of another. However, it is imperative to clarify that my relationship with Jill remained strictly professional. Eventually succumbing to exhaustion from the tumultuous emotional turmoil, 
I retreated to my bed, suggesting that Karen seek solace in Jake's embrace, as it seemingly provided her with greater comfort. In an earnest effort to maintain transparency, I promptly reached out to Jill, apprising her of the distressing circumstances. Given that Jake was her significant other, Jill understandably experienced a wave of disappointment and anger. She graciously extended an invitation for me to seek refuge at the motel, allowing me the opportunity to gather my thoughts and formulate a plan for the future. The following day, I loaded my personal belongings into my truck. Jake's vehicle remained motionless, inadvertently obstructed by my own during the events of the previous evening. I informed Karen that she was welcome to keep the rental property and its furnishings, as they paled in significance compared to the emotional turmoil that had transpired. I made it abundantly clear that I would return my tools at a later time, requesting her absence during that occasion. Upon returning to the residence to retrieve my tools, an unfamiliar bag seized my attention, discreetly nestled beneath my workbench. Intrigued by its presence, I resolved to delve deeper into its contents. To my utmost astonishment, upon closer scrutiny, I discovered a substantial quantity of meticulously packaged and concealed tablets. It became evident that these tablets were, in all likelihood, party pills intended for recreational purposes. A thorough search of the premises unveiled two additional bags and an approximate sum of $12,000 in cash. The fragments of the puzzle began to align, and a disheartening revelation dawned upon me. Jake's purported occupation as a pharmaceutical sales representative served as a facade for his clandestine involvement in the illicit trade of pills. The realization dawned upon me that Jake might have been the supplier of those pills to Karen for their intimate encounters. Though initially consumed by anger, a different thought soon washed over me. An opportunity for retaliation emerged. Jake's car remained parked in its usual spot, a symbol of his transgressions. With calculated intent, I entered the residence, obtaining his spare keys and adorning a pair of gloves sourced from the garage. Deliberately planning my actions, I discreetly placed half of the acquired cash and a solitary bag of pills within the confines of Jake's car trunk. Resourcefully, I removed the spare tire from the wheel well, concealing the remaining bag of pills within it. As for the other two bags, I surreptitiously disposed of them down the storm drain in the alley adjacent to my dwelling. The sum of $6,000, a mere fraction of the cost of the furniture Jake had imposed upon me, took on its own significance amidst this act of retribution. In the aftermath, I directed my ire towards Jake and Karen, weaving a carefully crafted narrative befitting one who had been wronged. Messages were sent, expressing disbelief at their actions and lamenting the betrayal of our friendship. I made it unequivocally clear that I had departed from their lives, extending well wishes for their happiness in their newfound union. Taking matters a step further, I anonymously tipped off local law enforcement and the ATF, providing them with a vivid description of an individual resembling Jake. I provided a detailed account of him loading what appeared to be narcotics into a vehicle matching his own. To bolster the tip, I shared a partial license plate number corresponding to his car. Swiftly, the authorities located the vehicle and uncovered the concealed pills. Unforeseen repercussions arose when it was discovered that Karen happened to be driving the vehicle at the time. She was subsequently released upon the realization of the mistaken identity, but a warrant for Jake's arrest loomed ominously. As an unexpected bonus, I later discovered that not only was Jake being pursued by the police, but his supplier as well, having suffered significant losses in their illicit trade. Fast forward three months, and I had acquired a new residence, maintaining a close partnership with Jill. Karen, carrying Jake's child, found herself entangled in his fugitive status, prompting a sudden departure from the area when she was in her eighth month of pregnancy. Twelve months after the incident, amidst an evening of celebration, Jill and I found ourselves blurring the boundaries between business and pleasure, embarking on a romantic journey. That was a decade ago, and we are now happily married with two children, having recently launched our third entrepreneurial endeavor. My father still indulges in his weekly ritual of savoring steak and beer, while whispers suggest that Jake and Karen may have sought refuge in the vast expanse of Alaska, although such rumors remain unverified. Reflecting upon it all, a sense of remorse tugs at my conscience, for Jake inadvertently paved the way for me to discover genuine happiness with Jill and lead a life brimming with joy and fulfillment. I sincerely hope that Jake and Karen have found their own paths to contentment.